Investing in a password manager is one of the best things you can do to keep your online identity safe. Today, we're gonna break down how to set up Bitwarden, one of the most popular online password vaults. We'll cover how to get it set up, how to use it, and most importantly, how to set this up securely so that your passwords are safe from online hackers. To start, we're gonna go right to bitwarden.com. From there, go ahead and click on log in. You're gonna get prompted to log in here, which we don't have an account yet, so go ahead and click on create account. From here, we're gonna to have to provide some information to get our password vault set up. We're gonna need an email address, we're gonna need a name, and then most importantly, we're gonna need a master password. When setting up your master password, you're gonna to have to use something that is long and complex, but easy to remember. The best way to do this is to use something known as passphrases. With passphrases, you can take a lot of random words and string a sentence together so that it hits a lot of the complexities. You can put special characters in there, which can be just typical punctuation, but you can have a long password as a result of this. So this could be one of your favorite quotes. It can be a quote from a movie, a book, it doesn't matter. Using this method, you can have a passphrase that is easily 50 characters, 100 characters or more, but it's super easy to remember because it is simply a phrase. So we'll go ahead and put in all of our information here, starting with the name, and then I'm gonna take my super secret password that is just a passphrase, pop that in. We have Bitwarden saying that's a strong password, so I passed that test. We're gonna type that in again, and I'm not gonna give a password hint here. Check both of these boxes, and then you're gonna be able to get this account set up. When you click on create account, you're gonna be able to get prompted for this next screen. Now, note that on the right side here, we have Google Chrome popping up saying, do you wanna save the password? We don't want to use that anymore, so we're going to click through to the Google Password Manager and I'm going to deselect Offer to Save Passwords and then also Auto Sign In. This will stop Google from prompting us if we want to do this moving forward. So we'll close out of this and we're going to come back here and I'm going to go ahead and click Continue and from here we'll just type in the master password that we just created. This is going to allow us to then log in to Bitwarden for the first time. We'll dig into the interface in a bit here, but the first thing you're gonna have to do is verify your email account. So go ahead and click send email here, and then that is going to send a verification email to whatever email address you used. Go ahead, access that email, click on that link, and then it's gonna prompt you to log in again here just to verify your email account is legitimate. So we'll go ahead, pop in our master password again, and go ahead and click on login with master password. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do after you log in is check out your account settings because we wanna make this more secure right off the bat. So to do that, we're just gonna click up here, we'll go to account settings, and then we're gonna head on over to security. So the first thing that you'll see here is that you're gonna have the option to change your master password. You just set up that master password so you don't need to worry about that now, but if you ever wanna change that in the future, this is where you would do it. The first thing we're gonna do here is take a look at a two-step login. With the free version, you are gonna be limited in the types of MFA that you can set up to secure your Bitwarden account. This is why I do recommend upgrading to the paid version because it does unlock hardware keys and that's gonna help keep your account more secure. But if you do opt for the free version, that's okay. All I'm going to recommend is that you use the Authenticator app. So that's what we're gonna set up today. So to set up that Authenticator app, you're gonna see this right here under Providers, and we're just gonna go ahead and click on Manage. And from here, it's going to ask you to put in your master password again, so we'll just pop that in. And then from here, you'll get the instructions to set it up. So Bitwarden is gonna recommend you using either Authy or Microsoft Authenticator, but you can use any of your software-based apps that you have. Google Authenticator is another option here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. So off screen here, I'm just using my phone to set up this code. First, I'm gonna scan the QR code. Then I'll be able to get my one-time password here and I'll just set that up here. And I'll click turn on. So the next time I log in, I'm gonna be prompted to use my second factor of authentication, which I just set up. This is the additional security that we wanna see on our password vault. From there, we'll just close out of this and we'll go ahead and then click on the keys here. Bitwarden updated the default settings in 2023 to align to industry best practices. So this is going to be good, but you can always make it a little bit more secure. So if you wanted to, you could increase the number of KDF iterations, and this is going to make it harder for somebody to brute force that vault. This is also going to slow down how long it would take for you to unlock your vault as well. 
So there is a bit of a trade-off here. For most modern devices, you probably aren't gonna really notice it too much if you're just incrementing it a little bit. If you wanted to increase the defaults, I would recommend going above 1 million, but again, industry best practices do say that the 600,000 number is okay for now. The next thing we'll take a look at is just around the vault timeout. This is gonna be how long your vault is going to stay open on your system while you're idling. That means you're not using it. So the default here is 15 minutes. I would recommend just bumping this down. Typically what we see here is that five minutes is gonna be good enough. So go ahead and change that, keep that at lock, and then just go ahead and click save here. Now that we have the security settings configured, we can now import any passwords that we may have saved in other programs so that we can just get this up and running. So to do that, I'm gonna head over onto the tool section here, and I'm gonna go into import data. From here, you can select the import file. You have a lot of different options here from various password vaults. The important thing here is that you are able to go into whatever you used before and just export that out, and then you can simply import it in here. So you just follow the prompts, you'll be able to import it, and then all your passwords will be in Bitwarden. Super easy. Now the next thing I wanna do is get the rest of my system set up to be able to use Bitwarden. Right now, we're only accessing it through the web, but I wanna be able to use the browser extension as well. So to do that, I like to go over to Bitwarden's website and just access it straight from here. So you can simply just go over to personal, you can view download options, and this is gonna get you all of the links that you need to download the software. They have an option for a desktop version. If you wanna download that, go ahead and do that. Super straightforward. What I'm really targeting here though is the web browser. So I'm using Chrome, so I'm gonna click on this and this is gonna toss me over to the Chrome store and I'm simply gonna add to Chrome. It's gonna prompt me through Chrome saying, hey, do you wanna install this? And it's showing me the different permissions. I know this is trusted, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that extension. Once that's installed, I'm just gonna click on my extensions button and it'll prompt me first for the email address, which I will pop in and then it's going to prompt me for that master password that we set up before. Now, because we set up MFA before, it's also gonna prompt us for that second factor authentication. So our security is already working. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in again. And we can see that we now have access to our vault. Now, you'll be able to do a bunch of things that you'd be able to do through the web app, whether it's generating passwords. If we had passwords in here, you'll be able to see those. And you can also change some of the settings in here as well. With just those few steps, you'll be up and running with Bitmorn. It's really that simple. So in order to see how this works, let's just try it out on a simple page here. So I'm just gonna go over to puppies.com and I'm gonna see if I can create an account here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just input some of our information here. We'll pop in our email address. We gotta confirm that. And here's where I'm getting to password. So from here, I'm gonna click on Bitwarden, and I'm gonna open that up, and then I'm gonna click on add a login. Now, it already has the name filled in, so we'll just add in our username here, and we're gonna auto-generate a password by just clicking on this here, and we'll have an idea of what we can do here. So we wanna be able to use uh, the standard things here. I like to go up to about 25 to 30 characters, uh, or you can also just use passphrase option here, uh, if I am gonna use the passwords, I'll just include the special characters. And I like to bump this up a little bit so we are using a little bit more of a random uh, type of password here. And then I'll go ahead and click select. And you can see it already has saved the URL for this. So that's gonna help us. If we wanted to keep this organized, we can also use uh, different folders here which you can organize in your vault but I think here we are in a good spot, so I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So that gets added in here for puppies.com, and we can see the little cheat code here. If we wanna fill in the password automatically, we just hit Control Shift L. You also have the option to change the autofill settings here. You can do that so when you access the page, it automatically shows up. So we'll configure that in just a minute. In the meantime, we're gonna click got it, and I'm gonna go back to the site here and do Control Shift L. And you can see there that it automatically puts everything in. So now the next time that we come to puppies.com, we go to sign in 
And now we can just go ahead and do Control Shift L again. Now you can see it didn't save properly here. It actually just took the username instead of the email address. So to change that, I'm gonna go back into Bitwarden. I'm gonna view it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click edit here, and I'm gonna change that username over to my email address. So we go ahead, we click save, and then we're gonna close out of that, and I'll just do Control Shift L again, and you can see it updates it, and now I can go ahead and sign in. So while that was really convenient, I still feel like I wanna go a little bit faster. I don't wanna to have to do a bunch of clicks in order to get in. I wanna be able to just auto load my password in. So we're gonna enable that feature now. To do that, we're gonna go back into our Bitwarden app. We're gonna go back over to the settings, and we're gonna click on this autofill here. From here, I'm just gonna go ahead and enable that, and all we need to do is just close out of that. So now I'm gonna go back to puppies.com, I'm gonna go to sign in, and you can see it just automatically filled that in for me. Now when we go back to our web browser, we can see puppies.com is in there, it has already synced, and we have all of our passwords working in tandem here. Anytime that you're gonna log into the web version of this, you're gonna now see a little banner for going premium, and they're really trying to just push these premium features. But again, I recommend this. If we take a look at these features, you get a gigabyte of encrypted storage for file attachments. You have the additional MFA, which I mentioned before. You get this thing known as emergency access so that you can grant somebody else access to the password vault just in case something crazy happens. You also get these really cool different reports, password hygiene, account health, and if your password shows up in a data breach, you'll be able to be notified of that as well. You also have the option to add in this TOTP verification code. This is just a time-based one-time password, and that's just going to allow you to tie this in easier to your login process. You also get some additional customer support if you need that. And the cost for it is reasonable. You can get this for $10 a year. That's less than a dollar a month to enjoy the premium features. So there's really no excuse for you not to splurge to get this advanced feature set. It's just gonna make for a more robust experience for you. And that's Bitwarden in a nutshell. It's super easy to set up, even easier to use, and most importantly, it keeps your passwords safe from hackers. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that now because we're gonna release more deep dives on different features in Bitwarden and other password managers to make sure that you can keep your password safe and secure.